I want to talk about celebration. I want to celebrate with you the power of collective grassroots action to drive change on things that we as local people from Plymouth believe in and want to see change in. When I came to Plymouth, my landlady at the time repeatedly asserted that Plymouth was the graveyard of all ambition, a great place for surfing, a great place for lifestyle, but not a great place if you want to drive change. It stuck with me, because at heart I'm a nature boy, I'm an environmentalist, I want to, and what makes me tick is driving change, not in any specific area, but generally the environment, that's a big piece, but I wanted to see something of that. And so this, that statement sticks with me, and I want to provide to you some evidence of why it's fundamentally wrong. In 2013, um, 100 people came together um, with a shared sense of ideal and a shared sense of mission as to what they wanted to change. They wanted to fuel a local energy revolution. They came together with a shared sense, of, well, they were a collective group, an eclective group, and they shared three things. They all wanted to fundamentally shift issues around affordable warmth. They wanted to challenge that. They wanted to change the fact that regularly people in Plymouth were having to choose between heating and eating. They wanted to take better advantage of the solar, the bountiful solar energy that falls on our beautiful sunny city and capture that into clean, green, renewable energy. And they wanted to challenge the incumbent corporates that currently supply in a very poor and expensive way our basic needs of heat and power. Now, the issues associated with the frustrations with the big six are well articulated. Many of you will share them with me. Um, the issues around our need to wean ourselves off fossil fuels are also well articulated and that move towards a renewable, low-carbon future needs no further articulation here. But the issues around fuel poverty are more poorly understood, more deeply hidden. But the fact is that in 1415, the winter of that year, 44,000 people died in the UK from what are called as preventable excess winter death. 30% of those died because they were in a home that was too cold. Just here in Plymouth, just within our city, 15,000 households live in that situation of fuel poverty. They are regularly having to make those choices, those very difficult choices, between heating and eating. That means, and in certain wards, that gets up to 28%. So on average, it's 13%. In certain wards of the city, that's 28%. So one in three, four households, when you're walking down certain streets, are making those choices. So those 100 people came together in April of 2013 and defined what they felt to be a different future. They defined a future that was defined around cooperation. They defined an organisation called Plymouth Energy Community, cooperative at its heart, the structure where every member has a vote in how that organisation goes forward. Every member gets the vote as to the board directors who will control the direction of that business. They had a simple mission, which was to take revenues from so locally owned solar power, solar power stations, solar power stations, and drive those revenues to support the fuel poor in the city. They believed that ownership was important, that if we were going to make a drive a change in these difficult areas, we needed a different paradigm, a different model. And we know that people care about the things they own. So let's give them the power to own their energy infrastructure and take choices about that and take choices about how we generate our energy and how we use it. And from that, Plymouth Energy Community was born. Those simple ideals, that simple collective action, that simple expression of those. Has it worked? 
Let's answer that question in a different way. Were we naive? Absolutely were we naive. Have we got it all right? No, we've got lots of things wrong. But is it working? Absolutely it is working. Just last year, 2016, the ideals of those first 100 people it landed with 3,500 households in this city receiving advice, which will save them £4 million across the lifetimes of the safe, to that advice and the measures of energy efficiency and renewables that that lands. That's £4 million staying here within Plymouth as a result of the ambition of those 100 people. It resulted in... £70,000 of small-scale fuel debt from you know, fuel-poor households across the city being written off through a relationship that Plymouth Energy Community has established with a charitable trust. That's £245,000 of fuel debt being written off between £300 and £9,000 worth of debt, so alleviating that burden from how there are some of the most vulnerable households in the city. It resulted in the equivalent of eight football pitches worth of solar panels being placed on 32 school roofs across the city, from our smallest one here at Shekinah Mission in Bar Street, where it's just 10 panels, to our largest one here at Ernest Settle, 16,000 solar panels, all coming from those 100 people's initial vision and mission. That generates... 47,000 megawatts out of hours of clean, green electricity last year. That's enough electricity coming from locally owned energy infrastructure to make 43,000 cups of tea. Something we are very proud of. So, how have we done that? Well, we're a cooperative. We're a community benefit society, so we've done it by collaboration by working and building partnerships with those that share our values. We've grown our membership from those 100, those original 100, is now 1,500. We've grown a staff team, of, a brilliant staff team, from one and a half people, half a person, yeah, to 10 people. We've built a strong partnership with the local authority and 45 other organisations around the Devon and Cornwall area who share our mission and share our values and, sh and desire to support those vulnerable households with energy issues. We've partnered with the devil. So uh, through a partnership with British Gas, we landed £3.2 million worth of grant that came into the city that wouldn't have come here otherwise. And that's resulted in 700 houses getting an external wall insulation, a big cosy blanket around their houses. Which means that Teresa here and her daughter no longer, well now save about in the order of £400 per year off their energy bill, but more importantly, Teresa's daughter no longer suffers with the colds and the flus and the circulatory issues that she did year on year. In her words, our interventions were life-saving. And we've built and articulate a proposition that has been investable. 500 of our members have invested between £50 and £100,000 in our solar installations. We've sold them community shares to the value of £2.4 million, and we've used that community share capital to leverage in over £4 million of social investment back into the city to help us own our locally owned energy infrastructure. We've offered them a 6% return on their investment, a very fair return in our view. And for that they get, obviously, their interest payments, but they get to share in our mission, they get a vote in the direction of our business in the future, and they get to share in the outcomes. They've invested in us because we are about community benefit, we are putting people before profit. So your job is, if you hear statements like Plymouth is the graveyard of ambition, or anything else of that inclination, is to go away from tonight and recount the stories of all the people in the front row and of Plymouth Energy Community and the local revolution that we are fueling. Thank you. <laughs>